Dear colleagues, dear chairman, my name is Kaza Dameli. I'm resident at the Department of Urology in Clinic of Konoaburg in Austria. In keeping with our previous presentations of the Victor system, an adjustable artificial urinary sphincter, I would like to share with you our experiences after 104 implantations. I have no conflict of interest to report. The device is available as Victor with an occluding cuff, a pressure regulating balloon and a pump. It's also available as Victor Plus with an additional stress relief balloon to transmit temporary interabdominal changes to the occluding cuff. The device is pre-connected and the pump has a self-sealing port for injection or removal of fluid to adjust the system pressure. Adjustment can be done at any time after implantation. Between 2016 and 2020, the device was indicated in 104 patients. Eight patients with more than three previous incontinence surgeries were excluded. So if we evaluate the data of 96 patients in a mean follow-up time of 24 months. This table shows the baseline characteristics of our patients. The most common cause of incontinence was radical prostatectomy. I would like to highlight the last two rows of this table. As you can see, more than half of the patients in this cohort had a history of pelvic irradiation or previous surgical treatments for incontinence. The results? The pet pede usage improved from 6 to 1.2. 75% of the patients were socially dry by definition and an improvement of more than 50% in pet per day usage were reported by 92% of the patients. In average, 1.7 adjustments were needed to achieve these results. The satisfaction rate was reported with 83%. We did also a subgroup analysis between index patients and patients with history of irradiation or previous incontinent surgeries. The results in terms of pet per day usage were similar and showed no relevant differences between the groups. The adverse events are listed below. We have done optimizing surgeries in 10 cases to improve the overall results. In some cases, a smaller cuff was required because of persistent urinary incontinence. And in four cases, we repositioned the pump to facilitate the handling. I would like to mention that all these 10 cases were within the first 40 implantations and the data include the initial learning curve. Within the whole series, eight explantations were reported. Four because of persistent urinary incontinence, two cases of urethral erosion and one case of device infection were reported. Conclusion and take home messages. The device provides adjustability in regulating pressure in situ. In this cohort, we achieved a continence rate of 75% and the revision rate was acceptable. More than half of the patients in this cohort had previous incontinence surgeries or history of irradiation. I would like to point out that the data includes the initial learning curve. These results are promising, however, bigger cohorts and long-term follow-ups are needed. Thank you for your attention and now I'm looking forward for your questions.